First we'll take a look at just some of the basics of NMR theory. Um, NMR is short for nuclear magnetic resonance and it's a form of spectroscopy similar to what we've talked about with IR spectroscopy and UV vis spectroscopy. And just keep in mind spectroscopy is the interaction of matter with energy. Now NMR uses a very low energy radiation from the radio frequency region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So it's those same radio waves um, that's being used for AM and FM radio and Wi-Fi, things like that. And what we're going to look at is the fact that only certain nuclei are actually NMR active. And the ones that are NMR active are those that have an odd mass number or an odd atomic number. And these nuclei possess a special property known as nuclear spin. The most common one that we're going to spend a lot of time looking at is proton NMR. So we'll look at the proton for an example. And a proton, or just a hydrogen, has one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons. So this has an atomic number of one, so it, which is odd, therefore it does possess nuclear spin. Now nuclear spin has two states. We have plus one half and minus one half. The positive one half spin state is known as the alpha state. The negative one half spin state is known as the beta state. And in the absence of any external stimuli, specifically a magnetic field, which is what we're going to talk about, but if there's no magnetic field around, there's an equal probability of a proton being in either the alpha or the beta state. So there's really no preference, they're at the same energy. So now let's think of a proton as almost being like a small bar magnet. And in general, if you have a pile of bar magnets and you just throw them in a pile, they're going to be in a bunch of random orders. That's what we're representing here by these uh, six hydrogens. You can see that they're all pointing in different directions, very, very random. But just like a magnet, if you put a magnet in the presence of an external magnetic field, it's going to align itself with it. So that's what we do um, in NMR. So we take our sample and subject it to an external magnetic field. We're just going to call that B external, where B stands for the magnetic field. When that happens, we get alignment with this B external, which is represented by this blue arrow pointing upwards. And these protons are going to align in the alpha state, which is aligned with the B external, and the beta state, where they're aligned against the B external. Now, if we think of this in terms of energy, the beta state is higher energy only by a very, very small amount, but it's still um, an energy difference. The alpha state is lower energy. Now what that means, if it's lower in energy, more of our protons are going to align itself in that lower energy state. So that's why we have more present in the alpha state. From here what happens, now we're going to subject that to RF radiation. So there's an RF generator connected to the NMR instrument and it sends these electromagnetic waves through the sample and what's going to happen is when the right energy is hit with, 
hits a certain proton, it will promote it from the alpha state up to the beta state. So we can consider that sort of an excited state for that particular proton. Now it's not going to stay like this forever because what happens is after that energy is taken away this proton that is in this higher energy beta state it's going to relax back down to the alpha state where it started. During that relaxation we get back to where we start but that relaxation generates an NMR signal. So it's when that proton comes back down from the excited state that a signal is generated on the NMR spectrum. Now if we think about a molecule, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but every distinct proton in a molecule exists in its own distinct chemical environment. And therefore it requires a different radio frequency to cause excitation from the alpha to a beta state. So we'll look in just a minute at this compound. Now it's very easy to tell that we have a carboxylic acid proton and an alkyne proton. They're in very different chemical environments, so each of these protons is going to be excited by a different RF frequency. That means those different frequencies are going to result in different NMR signals. So this compound is going to show two NMR signals. Just to give you an idea of sort of the basic NMR instrument, this is what it looks like. And what we have here is a giant superconducting magnet. And that's what's creating the external magnetic field. And then down inside of this instrument is where you put the sample. So this magnetic field is actually rotating or is actually going around your sample. Down here at the bottom, coming up into the instrument, is the probe. And what that probe does is it's what subjects the sample to RF frequencies. There's an RF generator attached. And that sends the RF frequencies to the probe, and then the probe subjects those RF frequencies to your sample. And then from there, after the sample gets excited, relaxes, then it's going to send those NMR signals to a computer.